So this video is actually going to be new. I haven't done one of these before. It's going to be a product spotlight. And it's also a little bit of a hack to bypass permitting that a lot of people don't realize. Uh, we get calls all the time, like say you have a seawall or a dock and maybe you don't have pilings that go up against the edge of the, uh, edge of the dock or you have a seawall and there's no bumpers on it. So you're just hitting the concrete or hitting the steel or maybe at low tide, your boat keeps getting caught up underneath the dock. That's the most uh, standard scenario. Where low tide goes down, you have an over, say your piling's back here, you have an overhang in your dock, boat comes down, gets hung up here, sinks boat, boat gets stuck, damaged, ru ruins the rail, et cetera, et cetera. So people call me all the time because they want something called a fender pile, which we'll put in a picture somewhere around here so you can see one. But a fender pile is basically they install a big, typically timber pile. So you have your, sea, your dock, your seawall that has an overhang, the pile holding the dock was back here, they'll install a pile right here so that the boat can rub against it, tie off to it, and at uh, high tide, low tide, can go up and down on that wood, and then you don't get stuck underneath the dock because you can't get underneath it. They space on every 10 feet or so, so you can't get between them either, and that keeps your boat protected from getting damaged or sunk. Um, well, in worst case scenario, sunk. The problem with those are is they're expensive, even if you just want to install a couple, it's typically going to cost you uh, about 10 grand to have somebody install those. And then the permitting, because you have to get permits to install those also, is another, you know, a couple thousand dollars you're going to spend getting those uh, just permitted. You got to wait six months, et cetera, et cetera. It's a big pain in the ass. So the hack I want to show you on the product spotlight, I'm going to highlight, they're called, or I call them two things. I call them either aluminum standoff bumpers, or I call them up downs. The reason I call them up downs is you're going to see a picture of them right here is it's an aluminum brace so it's like this it's a 90 degree aluminum bracket gets bolted into the dock or concrete here bolted into the dock or concrete here and then has an aluminum brace that goes up and down it's an aluminum c channel with a rubber bumper in them the reason i call them aluminum standoff bumpers is because they're made out of aluminum they have a bumper on the outside and they keep the boat off of the dock can't get underneath it can't get too close to it etc the reason other people call them up downs is because what we do when we measure them is I go out to the dock when I'm measuring them for somebody and I'll measure down at low tide, figure out how, like if this is the dock, figure out how down low, how far down low tide is and then how far up high tide is, sorry, <laughs> up high tide is, and then figure out the freeboard of the boat. And then once I know those things, I say, okay, I wanna order a three, uh, I'll say I wanna order a three up, four down because it has to go low enough so the boat can't get underneath it at either the stern or the bow and vice versa. It has to go high enough the boat doesn't get caught up on top of it. That's something else I didn't talk about before is it's not just boats getting caught under a dock or a seawall, it's also boats getting caught on, dock, on top. So if you have a lip on your gunnel and the docks here comes up, tide goes down, sinks, gets hung up, rips off, breaks your fiberglass, cracks it, et cetera, et cetera. So it keeps it stood off the boat, sorry, off the dock, keeps the boat stood off the dock. And when you order them, you say, I want one that's, um, four up, three down, three down, four up, six down, two up, whatever it may be, depending on your dock situation. Um, so, oh, and also the big part is why I'm saying you can bypass permitting is because you don't need permits for these. You don't need local building department, per, local building department permits because it's considered an accessory, just like installing a cleat. And then also you don't need Army Corps and DP permits because you're not going in the water. So super cool there. Um, if you want to know a place to get them, I can set you guys up with that. Shoot me a DM. We'll figure it out for you. I can help you measure them too if you need it, whatever. Just send me some pictures. We'll get you some ideas and get you set up. Um, the other cool thing about it that I want to add is you can put cleats on them. So they have on the side of it, you'll see a little diagonal brace and on the outside of the C-channel. What I tell a lot of people to do is I say, I recommend, hey, mount your cleats to the side of that, one on each side, because otherwise you got to mount the cleats to the surface of your dock. Why you don't want to do that is two reasons. Number one, stub your toes on them. It freaking hurts. Uh, <laughs> ropes get caught on them. Shore power gets caught on them. Hoses get caught on them, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. Um, cleats on the dock are like, to me, the worst thing. Also, if you tie up to one in a storm or God forbid, um, you let your brother-in-law borrow the boat and uh, he pulls away with a tied onto it cracks it breaks off your dock cracks your concrete and now you got spalling issues forever so if they're mounted to the actual up down you don't have that issue keeps them out of the way keeps your dock clean um putting coolers in and off the boat the cleats on the dock aren't in the way etc etc so um yeah that's the product spotlight aluminum standoff bumpers slash up downs and we got some pictures here for you and reach out if you need anything thank you